Hey everyone, this is Jeff Bat with Learning Dojo, and I wanted to talk to you today about preventing the user from being able to move on to the next page before completing some interaction on the current page. There are various ways that you can do this, but I'm going to show you the simplest way to do this first, and then we can talk more about sophisticated ways of doing the same thing. It all depends on the type of interaction and what you want the learner to engage. Let's go ahead and explore what we have to begin with in this sample interaction. Here we have a simple three-page course. Of course, you would for sure see more than three pages in an ordinary course, but this illustrates the point. The first page is a title page with a simple button. As a side note, if you have a begin button on the first page, get rid of the next button so you don't have duplicate ways to go to the next page. On the next page, we have a pretty basic tab interaction. The learner clicks on each of the circles to read more about this person. In each of the circles, you have a hover state and you have a visited state. The visited state will keep track of what circle they have visited. Once a circle is clicked on, it shows the layer explaining a little bit more about the person and has an option to return to the main layer where they can see the check mark of the person that they just visited. The interaction is working as it is at the moment, but here's the problem. I want to make sure that the learner visits each circle before they're allowed to continue on to the next page. Right now, nothing is actually stopping them from advancing. I can click Next and go on to the next page. To accomplish what we want, we need to take advantage of conditionals. Conditionals make sure a trigger only runs in the situations you want it to run, which in this case, that is precisely what we want. It is advanced to the next page if all circles have been visited. If is the keyword here. So pay attention to that when we're working with conditionals. If you can say what you want in plain English and there's the word if, then you probably need a conditional. Luckily, Articulate Storyline can check to see if states of several objects are visited. So we can run the next page trigger if the circle one is visited and circle two is visited and so forth. And is another keyword which we'll wanna talk about soon. We also have to keep in mind when we want to check to see if the items have been visited. In our case, it's when the user tries to click on the next button. We have the next trigger already in our trigger panel, so let's double click on that trigger. At the bottom of each trigger, we have a conditional section. We want to add a conditional to check to see if all items have been visited. So let's add our first one by clicking on the plus if button. All right, so here we'll see a drop down box of three tabs variables, objects, and window. We want to check the object states. So let's go ahead and select objects. Objects are what's within the course. So let's go ahead and select Becky from the drop down box. Now we can check to see if Becky is equal to, and then the state that we are checking. We are checking to see if she is equal to visited. So select the drop down box from normal to visited. If we were just checking one object state, that would be it. But we need to check for all four circles. So we need to repeat what we've just done three more times. But we're going to use our next keyword, and. Click on the plus if again, go into objects and click on Dominic next. Adjust the state we're checking to be visited as well. But notice there is a keyword I was talking about, and. Select it and you can see that we can use keyword and, or we can use the keyword or. If you want circle one and circle two to both be visited, then we need to make sure that the keyword is selected as and. If you want this to run if either of them are chosen, then you can select the word or. So we'll use the keyword or for something else, but let's go ahead and finish off the final two conditional statements here. Once you have completed adding all conditional statements, click on the OK button. Let's go ahead and preview this and see if this is working. Notice that I cannot click on the next button. If I go ahead and complete all four circles, then I can go on to the next page. You might think you are done with this interaction, but there's one big issue that often tends to get ignored. The issue is when I try to move on before completing the interaction, let's say I've only finished two circles and I try to move on to the next page, when I click on next, nothing happens. Clicking on a button having nothing happen could be perceived as a broken button. The way to solve this issue is to prompt the user to complete the interaction. Going back into Storyline, you can see that I have a warning layer with a simple call out telling the user that they must visit all circles. I need to show this layer when the next button is clicked, but only if, and that's a keyword, 
If the circles are not in the visited state, it doesn't matter which ones. I want to show this layer if any of them are not visited. Let's create a new trigger by clicking on the new trigger button and select the drop down box to show a layer and select the warning layer. Now let's have this happen when the user clicks on the next button. And we only want to show this if, there's our conditional keyword again, if any of our circles are not visited. So start with Becky. Select the drop down box to be visited. We want to check to see if this is not visited. So let's select the equal sign and adjust that to be not equal to. I find that it helps to repeat back the trigger in plain English sometimes. We want to show the warning layer if the Becky circle is not equal to visited. So that looks good to me. Let's repeat this for Dominic and add a new conditional. Change the state to visited and then the equal sign to not equal to. We have a problem if we keep the keyword and. Becky and Dominic would both need to be visited for this trigger to happen. What if Becky is visited, but Dominic is not? It would be better if we change this word to or, meaning that either one of these could be not visited and this trigger will run. All right, let's repeat the same thing for the other two circles. and then click OK. You will notice the two triggers for the next button. First, it will check to see if all have been visited, and if they all are, it will move on to the next page. If for some reason they are not, it does not fire the trigger, and it moves on to the following trigger, which this trigger will then check to see if any of the circles are not visited, and if any of them are not visited, it will show the warning layer. It helps to talk through the triggers to make sure that your logic is correct. Let's go ahead and preview this and make sure it's working. Let's visit one circle and try to move on. You can see that it shows the warning, which is exactly what I want to happen. I do have a timeline trigger on the warning label hiding the layer at five seconds, so that is why it goes away. That is how you prevent a user from moving on until the learner has visited all items. If you want to get more complex, you would need to use variables instead of object states. That means that you would have to create a variable and then update that variable as the learner is visiting each object and then instead of checking for object states, you check to see if the variable is a certain amount or if it's true or if it's false. If it is, then you move on. And if it is not, then you show the warning label. And that is it. If you're looking for a full in-depth course on Articulate Storyline, please check out my website at learningdojo.net. And if you use the coupon code YouTube, you'll get 50% off any course. Or subscribe to my YouTube channel for any new tutorials that I create. Thanks, everyone.